went all the way to the airport, <laughs> forgot the bag full of formula that we left in the fridge. We initially planned to stay in America for nearly two months, but with Danteo arriving early and miraculously getting his US passport and Spanish paperwork done in record time, we decided to head home after just three weeks. Since it was our first time traveling with a baby, we gave ourselves plenty of time to check in at the airport. Or so we thought. So we were at the airport, um, leaving the car, we have to leave it in there. We were trying to kind of go ahead of time just ahead of the time that we normally do when we travel, which we always cut it so short. So I said to Dean, let's go a little bit earlier just because we have a newborn just to know how is the process and so on. Anyway, we get there. We're struggling to kind of remove the uh, the chair, you know, the base that connects. And we only just realized we left the food for the baby in the fridge. We have to kind of, we're rushing to come back. We're just back and we have like, 20 minutes right now to go back to the airport to drop the car off to anyway dramas There's always drama here we're home with the baby safe and sound he was so good on the plane the whole crew was obviously like just like oh my god this is like they would love to see a little baby i think anyone that takes a child on a plane is slightly terrified of like what they're gonna do because you you can't escape can you, you? you're terrified for the others not for yourself it's yeah. just more for like you know yeah. people being bothered and be like um you know a baby or whatever is he gonna go into crying fit what's gonna happen what we found and we researched is that it's the takeoff and landing that's the big thing with their ears we fed him yeah. taking off we fed him landing and honestly i promise he didn't cry one bit. I'm gonna show off because we were so proud. It all went really fast and he has been an angel. Yeah, he's been very good. So so we just got home. Well, we got home yesterday. All the family came around. Honestly, it was lovely, but it's so exhausting because we hadn't slept on the flight. The only person that slept on the flight was Danteo. No one offered to take us to the airport whilst everyone offered to pick us up because we had a third we had danteo so my mom and my sister both drove down to london it's a couple of hours from where we live to pick us up from the airport and it's like we didn't have a child anymore <laughs> they were like ah! our house is officially a mess because it's got lots of baby stuff in it now we need to like plan it out so that it looks a little bit tidier and Danteo is enjoying his new cot in his nursery. He absolutely loves his nursery. As a lot of you very wisely have said, we need a, a changing table in, on the nursery and we will, and I feel we will when he starts turning, you know, like just turning around. We bought a very cheap Moses basket because we thought he would want to sleep in there because it's smaller and a little bit cosier. He doesn't like it that much. That little Moses basket there was like 50 quid. His car upstairs was a few thousand, so and he likes that one better. So yeah, we have a baby with expensive taste. The jet lag was the biggest thing. I didn't even think you could have jet lag with a baby. I know that sounds ridiculous, but when you're already like awake a lot of the time anyway, you you would think you'd get tired at some point. But we just the whole week that we were got home, we yeah. just we did not sleep at night. Which he is, slept perfectly. I know, which was amazing. which is actually really annoying because when he <laughs> sleeps, you you do want to sleep. We are uh, completely jet lagged. I didn't even know that was possible when you have a child that we didn't sleep at all last night and it was nothing to do with the baby. <laughs> so yeah, so today's gonna be rough. I, I hate having jet lag. Like I always in day three, I start Googling, can you die of jet lag? You know, <laughs> because I'm like, why? I know I'm tired. Why can I not sleep? We're going to see my grandma today, which will be his great nan. She's 90. So, so yeah, very excited for her to see him. He hasn't um, met my family yet. No, he hasn't. So the plan was that um, Borja's mum was going to come over and then it was changed because your brother was going to come over yeah. in September. And she wanted to come at the same time. So the cousins were together because my brother has got, uh, well, basically our nephew from my brother's side. He's actually 11 months apart with him. So, which is going to be lovely when they grow older because they like very, very close. 
So my mum was like, oh, I want to come as well. You know, I want to see them together. So I'll come at the same time because they were very expensive flights as well and so on. And now we've realized that the information we've got for his Spanish passport, it expires in six months, is it? Uh -huh. Which means we have to fly, fly to Spain to sort that out. Yeah. So instead of them coming in September, we're yeah, going to them. But also then we're going to have the opportunity to look into setting a nursery for him slash what is going to be his bedroom while we go there. Because I really want to kind of get to the point that we go back to how we used to kind of go so much um, to Spain. When we met, we always agreed that we'd have um, something in England and something in Spain. So we've, we're so lucky that we've got like a small base yeah. in Spain that we can go to. Also the apartment we've got, we love. We'll show you it at another time. His first little light in today in, his in new, England. His new car seat in here. And he's got a little cardigan because in England, like oh the change God. from oh Phoenix to be like hell that was like that hot. So work is not going to stop. It's actually crazy that we're itching to get back to get things done. <laughs> I was, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I was in Phoenix like holding him and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to kind of like go back and see how the whole, how we're going to set everything up, you know, having yeah. him and, and getting things done. It's just such a shame that we couldn't take like a load of time off just to be with him. But I think the fact that we're splitting it means that there's always someone with him which is nice yeah. our mindset hasn't changed in terms of work we know that like we are working at a bit slower pace but we're still getting so much stuff done i know it's really frustrating though because we're so used to be going so fast pace fast pace when you slow down and stop it makes you really tired so when you stop yeah. and you have to feed him yeah as well as him getting tired we get tired as well so it's really hard to like then bump back up and get the energy you know when you're in a project you want to just do it all until you're finished. Yeah. We got a really good routine while we were away where we had like two separate bedrooms. So one person that was looking after him would be in one bedroom. Yeah. And then the other bedroom would be like the quiet time. Well, it's much better here because you can close the doors, you can seal things off, but we don't have another bedroom. So we really want to get that other bedroom sorted now. Yeah, the principal bedroom. Yeah. And then we're like, oh, I really want to get the bathroom sorted because then he can have a proper bath instead of being in this little baby bath. We said to ourselves that when we come back from America, we're getting back onto the main estate yeah. and doing the servant's kitchen. Yeah. So we need to do that as well. So it's a big juggle of what the hell we're going to do first, or we may end up just starting all of them and being a complete mess. We were planning to be out of the country for about six or seven weeks. So when we returned home after three weeks, the gardens weren't too bad, were they? And the work that we had to do just to get them back up to scratch. Although, it's amazing what happens in just three weeks, isn't it? So we're home from America, baby on, on tow. <laughs> this section is looking amazing. And look, I just, I love having things all in a nice line. And I think it's been successful because most of the stuff we've started inside the greenhouse. Now, if I spin it round to the other section, it's awful. We try to grow stuff from seed here and as much as it worked last year, this year it hasn't because all the wildlife have worked out what we're growing and they come and eat it all. So we're basically growing weeds and that's about it, which is such a shame. Hydrangeas don't look the best in this section. They've gone a bit floppy. These are supposed to be the strong Annabelles as well, which is crazy. I think they scammed us and they just gave us the normal Annabelles. <laughs> we want this whole section to fill out with hydrangeas, but I think we need to plant much more really to get that effect. We're just working on the front here. We have got robot mowers, so the grass looked absolutely fantastic. And we have got as well irrigation set up, which it comes in a timer. So basically what it does is like, it keeps things alive while we were away. And I think that's why we yeah. didn't feel like this is just going wild. And the first time ever we had someone help us at the main estate just cut the grass. Yeah. But inevitably, because we were only away three weeks, they only came like once. once. But it still helped. I said to Borgia we should have had them continue on while we're at home because obviously having Dante and getting used to, you know, a whole different lifestyle, but no, he cancelled them. We've got these hollies which we planted a couple of years ago and they've established really well over there. But over here we've got an infection, we think. So Borgia's cutting out all of the dead or infected bracken and hopefully won't spread any further. The fruit trees are doing amazing, but a little too good. The plum trees are producing too much fruit. So we're gonna have to cut a bit of the fruit off because our branches just aren't strong enough to hold all of that at the moment. 
the cherry trees, produce cherries, and they've been eaten by the birds. <laughs> and we have, I believe, yeah, we've got some pears on our pear tree. The original apple tree is doing amazing. And the smaller one that we've got down here, we kept this because it is almost like a pink lady, like a pink lady Braeburn style apple. We love pink lady apples, but apparently they're protected and they could only be grown in Australia, I wanna say, or New Zealand, which is such a shame because it's our favorite apple, but this one is lovely. One of these days, I really want to have a whole setup so I can make apple juice and apple cider, apple cider vinegar. That'd be amazing. But for now, we just don't have time for it. <laughs> Unlike the yew hedges that died, these ones are doing amazing. So well, in fact, that we're gonna to have to cut them because our plan was always to only have the hedges at the level of the table inside the greenhouse, and then we can start making them into a shape, which will be lovely. And then I don't know if we've ever shown you this patch. This is the patch on the back end of the greenhouse. We still haven't worked out what to do with this yet. We've had a few ideas, but just getting round to doing it. The greenhouse had all boomed up. We'd started to have tomatoes growing. The greenhouse has gone a little bit mad. We'd need to do a little bit of weeding because even the strawberry plant has got very pretty, <laughs> a pretty flower growing. I don't know where it's come from. Oh no, the tomato thing's um, broken. I'm gonna have to try and fix that. Look at that. We've already got a red one. Oh my goodness, that looks so good. Oh, it's ready. And then just a random selection of stuff over here. We just really wanted to fill it out while we're away. I really want to get back in the mood of doing things. And I said to Dean, like, on Monday, I'm starting. So I have started to create this list called the slow list. And those are jobs that we can do in between breaks of feeding him and when he's sleeping. You know, like doing a little bit of weeding here, doing, you know, just little jobs. So at the minute, we are going to be weeding the strawberry patch, the weed in the middle. And yeah, I just look, look at this, like, do you remember this, the lavender that I moved back? I'm going to plant all of these. These are from seeds that I planted like three years ago, but because I moved these um, chives from the main state to, onto this pot, it suddenly everything started to kind of like to grow. Seeds from years ago, which is crazy. And then I've got my marigold, which I love. I just, it's just like a, such a underrated plant. It makes me, brings me joy. Can you believe like that? The roots are growing from the, them little. Oh, wow, yes. Break stems as well. So I think we could try planting that up now. God, this is new, this is new isn't it? Look. I know, it's crazy. But they're so weak, the leaves are. Yeah. I remember breaking them up as a kid at my grandma's. You loved it. I'd be like, one, two, and my grandma would be like, don't you touch that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's looking good. Oh, these tomatoes, look. I'm gonna pick it. Yeah, let's okay. make a salad. Hang on. I'm gonna... I'm gonna, uh... Oh, wow. I'm gonna have a bite. Mmm. Is it good? Oh. Can I have some? Honestly, it tastes so much better than the shops. Yeah. Well, it's that full of flavour, isn't it? It's, re it's really nice. So we're growing different species of tomatoes all the way along. So we've got four different types. These ones we've never been able to grow. These are like pear tomatoes, or they're called pear tomatoes in Spanish. Yeah, I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna... Don't cut back too much, no, okay? No, just sort of sand and heap it. Amazing. Wow. This is a, uh, a lettuce that's gone to seed. We've been waiting for it to go to seed so we can steal the seeds and then we'll get... we'll um, take it out. I don't know what this is. These pods. Do you know what these these are? <gasps> That's the rocket. Wow, yeah. how huge the pods are. Oh, these are pods as well. This is full of seed. Oh, you, amazing. You can see the seed. Amazing, because we can take them out now and dry the seeds out. Who said we couldn't do work with a baby? <laughs> we just have to time it perfectly for when he's sleeping, and then we can get working. I'm going to cut this yew hedge. It's the first time we're cutting it since we bought it, which is great. The plan with this hedge has always been to cut it in line with the height of the shelf that's inside the greenhouse because then it hides all the stuff that we've putting below. We really wanted a brick greenhouse, you know, like the brick section and then glass above, but it was so expensive. So this is our cheaper way of doing it. So I'm gonna try and cut it all nice to shape.
it, doesn't it? This is the first time that we're cutting it and we slowly will give it shape. Obviously, the further you go, <laughs> the less straight it looks. So yeah, we literally, I feel like we came back, we had two days or one day and we were back at it. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's the deja vu. I was on this wall five years ago, trying to uncover all the walls. And within five years, they're hidden again. It's just insane the amount of maintenance you need on a garden when you've got so much vegetation like this. I mean, it's just ridiculous. So I'm on the wall and what I do is I just walk along and I'm basically just cutting a line through all the way along. Cutting's the easy part, it's getting rid of all the stuff after. But I need to do this because we need to make sure that these walls are protected and I want to check that there's no branches leaning on this wall that might push it this way. You can already see it's slightly slanted in places anyway. In our heads we were like, oh we gain a month. So let's do some extra jobs that we weren't planning on. So now we're working on some of the maintenance on the caretakers, I some of the little we've jobs. We've run a whole maintenance of the estate that, you know, it's just the jobs that you never find the time because you're already in something else. So we said like, let's take this, this month to do loads of maintenance. The Rose Garden is a great representation of how well we're doing at maintenance at the moment, which is not very. <laughs> To keep on top of it, it's really hard, isn't it? Like deadheading is a daily job, which we just don't have, wow. especially with that little one over there. Training my new helper. Yeah, he's got to watch and understand how to do it. Yeah. So yeah, so Borja's doing the rose garden whilst I've been tackling um, the boring job of cutting back. Can you see these laurel hedges? We cut it back at the line of the wall when we bought the place because we were protecting the walls from with the worry that the hedges would push on the wall and push the walls out this way. I just, look at the amount of vegetation that I've got to take off, it's unbelievable. I've done the section at the end, but you know, you can only fit so much in a wheelie bin. This apple tree is doing amazing. This apple tree shouldn't be here. It should be in the orchard over here, but it was such a beautiful shape and produces such a high yield that we just couldn't move it. We just couldn't get rid of it. So it's in a very random spot in the working garden. Borsch is growing his echinacea here and his uh, hydrangea, I want to say paniculata. I should never do a tour of a garden because Borsch knows better than I about all this stuff. So this is a chard, but I said, let's let's see, see how big it grows. And this is how big it grows if you leave it to go to seed. Unbelievable, isn't it? Unbelievable. I mean, that's my hand there. Crazy. Coming back after three weeks, what does the courtyard look like? <gasps> oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Ugh, cobwebs everywhere. Look at these beauties. My goodness. Insane. Insane. Oh, the water feature needs cleaning out. Look at those. And they smell amazing. From this beautiful courtyard, let's take you to the servant's kitchen. So we've already done a couple of rooms and now our next job is the bathroom. I, know. I mean, look look at the view over oh, there. That's, wow. Yeah, that's so um, there's a lot to consider in here. We've got to hide the boiler somehow. We've got to get a washing machine in here. We also don't want to disturb this floor too much because we think it looks really pretty. And once you hack about with it, it'll never look the same again. We reinstated this wall, um, which we're making it look more original because at some point someone removed it. So we put these timbers and we use lime to and, uh, Latin plaster. and Latin plaster. What we're thinking is toilet there, which we already have started with a little cupboard here and then mm -hmm. um, the washing machine tumble dryer. We talked about having a shower in the corner and then having a nice thing here. Yes. This mirror. Yes. We've got all the waste in. We've got the water pretty much there because it's coming from that boiler, but we haven't got the waste for the shower. So we need to cut a line pretty much where that white, white pipe is there, yeah. close to the wall, yeah. and then get the shower tray that we've got and work out how we're going to run it into 
here to get the trap. Yeah. This wall is not square, so we're gonna have to square it first. The shower tray will pretty much dictate that. Mm -hmm. Or, so just in case you haven't seen, this is the lounge, um, and then this is the bedroom. This is the kitchen. So either we tackle the bathroom or we tackle the kitchen. We still haven't decided which one to do yet. I personally think that we should do the bathroom first because we have got everything for the bathroom already. We got everything like over a year ago. Everything is bathroom related here. So then we will empty these. We can get that one done, ticked. Mm -hmm. No, because what do we have to do here? Repairing walls, doing something with this range, putting a kitchen in. But it's not, it, we don't have to do anything with the floor. Well, apart from cleaning it, <laughs> it's really messy. What white will be faster? I think it's the same amount. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I'm just sick of doing bathrooms and we haven't done a kitchen in a long time. So I thought it'd be quite exciting to do a kitchen. I know there's just more cost because we don't have anything. Yeah, I know. So we're working our way into the caretakers. You can see we need to mow the grass. We're just cleaning up the doors. I think we're gonna do a new coat of paint on these doors because we painted them about five, six years ago and they're just, they're starting to fade a little bit and we like to make them look nice and perfect because this is the guest area. Also, can you see this? This has bothered us ever since we bought the place. We are repairing the, the one side of the caretaker's cottage. We want to, to paint it, but we need to co coordinate it to not have people stopping and because you have to kind of put scaffold. And we said, well, we had the cottage closed until the mid-August. Mid this is now the time or never. So we're doing that. We wanted to get it re-rendered, but it was so expensive. And I think we just, we've just we got to fix it for now. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and sand it up and just paint it all one colour and it will look a little bit better. Our focus since we've been back is just to get this um, courtyard tidy and looking nice again. And just like general stuff, you know, like cleaning out the outdoor toilets, even though we never use them and <laughs> that sort of stuff. Okay, Borja keeps mentioning this, right? He wants to put some like planting down here. He wants to do some, I don't know, what, what did you say? Cosmos? And let us uh, let me put it in context. This is not soil. So what we've got under here is hardcore and then about a hundred mil of soil. And that is just enough for the grass to grow. So for us to plant anything, we have to dig out all the hardcore. You'll see here that there's a hole that we did about three years ago to see how difficult it would be to do. And that's as far as we got. We're slowly doing some espaliering on these trees. This allows it for the branch to grow without making indentations. So this is what we use. You put this in the one end, as you can see over there, that in the other end, and then it tightens it. So until it's like very nice and sharp. Very easy when you have a row of bricks. I'm just going to count the spacing and I'm going to do the same over here. My advice is to do it in the mortar joint. Don't do it in the brick because if you do it in the brick, it might be stronger, but then you've ruined the brick forever. Well, here you can always patch up the joint. So we always do it in the joint wherever possible. Can see now how taut this is and so what we will do i will be training this branch from here up you know onto that but it's very heavy because of the apples and then i will be pruning the ones that we don't need i've also done this one you barely can see it but it's here and we need to kind of get this tree up high I've got some stuff. You can see these ones we're going to train and we will cut the remaining top. So we just finished working cleaning the front of the caretakers and the servants and we've just picked a lovely bouquet of hydrangeas to give to my mother. I think that being a parent is way better than what I expected. For real. It just becomes you. You're still that same person but you've got someone you're supporting. This has been a long journey for us and it's been years and in the planning and you know I said to somebody the other day I said like I love him before I had him you know because it was just like we I wanted him so much. Yeah. 
I was reading him a book for the first time and he reacted. He was like, ooh, you know, like the cooey sort of noises. I, and I just I started crying, yeah. didn't I? I was like, I don't know why I'm crying. I think it's just because he was finally doing a bit of we, communication. We, we had a lot of crying for a bit. I know, and then boys just started crying and I was just like, what are we doing? I'm putting a book together of all of his story, like pictures, his whole journey, what happened and stuff like that, because it's quite memorable, some of the stuff. And then he gets to read it when he's older. So I had something like that. My mum did that for me and I loved it. Um, so My yeah. mum didn't do it for me. Thanks, mum. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you to everyone that has sent gifts for Danteo. We didn't expect it. It's so lovely of you and he's just such a lucky kid. So, yeah, thank you.